Hi, this is Michael, VK5ZEA, and I'm up here at the VK5REXB D-Star repeater site. Just been doing some tests today to uh, indicate how bad our receiver desensing problem is. Here you can see our D-Star repeater hardware, the IDRP4000V, the controller, and the server computer there, which is running the ICOM gateway software. Below here is our duplexer, and it's a four-can duplexer made by the guys from AREG in Adelaide. And behind there, there is two extra cans which are in the receive chain. And they uh, pass the receive frequency and have a severe notch on the transmit frequency, which provides a little bit extra uh, isolation. And above here is a DCI uh, filter, which came from Canada. And it's set to 432.825 megahertz. And that's a one megahertz wide uh, bandpass filter just to provide a little bit extra selectivity for the receiver and below here we can see there's a t piece which i've made up with a bnc socket in it and three 20 db attenuators making a total of 60 db attenuation and that feeds down to my very ancient but trusty sister and donna service monitor and at the moment the attenuator here is six to 60 db so what we read off of here will be in microvolts taking into account the 60 db between the uh, the dial here and the attenuator there and plugged into the usb socket i have a laptop which is running the icom setting software which is in expert mode which allows you to see all sorts of other goodies to do with the uh, internals of the repeater plus one other thing when you're on the uh, transmitter side you can hit the t button and cause the repeater to key up. So it's a good way to actually make the transmitter side key up without having to actually um, make it do it via software or via an external signal, which can get a bit messy. And up here we have an amplifier, which if I turn the volume up, that is the received discriminator audio from the ICOM repeater. So I can turn that up and come down here and generate a signal. And there we go. So what we're listening to there is a one and a half kilohertz deviation, one kilohertz tone, and that's on around 0.3 of a microvolt on that scale there. So that's, that's, a, that's a good average. We'll, we'll stay with that for the moment. Now if we come over here to the laptop and we key up with the T, you can immediately hear that there is a lot of desensing cause by the transmitter um, even with all this filtering that you see here plus the bandpass filter there's enough energy getting through from the transmitter which by the way is on low power so that's two watts there's enough energy getting through to uh, provide that much descents on the signal and i actually have to go quite a bit higher if i go up another 20 db of signal of course it sounds a lot better there but if you see here there is still a bit of interaction between times the transmitter is on and transmitter is off. And even if I go up another 20 dB, you can still hear a little bit. Now, we're listening to the receiver. So that's the problems we're facing here with our D-Star system. Um, this is causing a large discrepancy between receive range and transmit range with our repeater we can hear this thing a long way away on the 20 watts coming out of this through this system it'll go 100 kilometers but it's really hard to get back even with 50 watts from a mobile set um, this uh, the desensing problem is that severe i'm not sure where to go to from here maybe a commercial duplexer uh, will perform better than this one which was made by areg i'm not sure um, if it doesn't, it's going to be an expensive uh, trial. Uh, the other problem is that uh, many manufacturers of uh, duplexing hardware from the United States uh, make their duplexes for the amateur band uh, 440 to 450 megahertz, which uh, is different from our band here in Australia. We use 430 to 440 megahertz, and a lot of them don't warrant or recommend their equipment be detuned to, to below the band they recommend. So that's the problem I've got at the moment. That's, uh, a, good that's a, a very good visual indication and the audio indication of the problems we're having. 
Yep, that's that's quite a bit of a distance. So that's like a almost a uh, a 40 dB increase in signal to have a minimal uh, in, in in the sort of uh, influence on the receiver, uh, which is a fairly significant sort of uh, signal difference between receive and transmit. So uh, I'm not sure if other D-Star repeater problems uh, repeater owners have this trouble. Uh, it's a simple thing to test. I found a document uh, by Steve NU5D from Texas who detailed how to uh, do this sort of test and uh, it's a good indication. And I've also done tests. Um, I thought that maybe there was just a lot of radiated energy from the antenna. The antenna is only about six meters above where I'm standing right now. And I thought maybe there's a lot of RF energy getting into the actual repeater hardware itself. So I did another test here and I've got my handheld radio set to 438.225, which is the uh, transmit frequency of the, uh, the, the repeater to simulate it transmitting. And what I can do is turn up the audio, turn this back down to the 60 dB, and I can key up on five watts right above the receiver and there's no problem at all. So there's no issue with shielding in the actual receiver module itself. It's coming back through this antenna system. So there you go. So uh, thanks for your time and uh, hope to talk to you on D-Star soon. This is VK5ZEA signing. We'll catch you later.